my goal is to pass the torch up. I don't ever want to be talked about generations from now. They should be talking about Roman and whoever follows him and whoever follows him because that's how it should be. Austin's theory is that he will be the future WWE champion. Well, I mean, speaking of that, you, you pretty much went for the top dog. You called out John Cena. You said that he should just pass the torch right to you. Why not? You know, like, why not go after the top? You know, not the middle, not the, you know, kind of at the top, the top guy. But no one cares, and you're wasting our time. Fans can see through the BS. Mm -hmm. If you don't believe in your character, it's what I said to Austin Theory. Dude, you are young. You are athletic. You will work for this company. You'll do interviews. You'll go X, Y, and Z. I don't believe what you do when you're out there. This is bad for business. But African wrestling fan, John Cena is a part-time wrestler who doesn't need the wins. And most importantly, by losing to these young future main eventers, he's not only giving back, he's also elevating them. Well, that's where I disagree. Because these losses make John Cena look bad and they also make the people he's supposed to be elevating look bad. Let me show you how. So between 2019 and 2023, John Cena has been in eight televised and pay-per-view matches. Out of those eight, he has lost five matches and he has only won three. But those three wins are from tag team matches, which means that John Cena needs a partner in order to win a match. What? This John Cena? This guy can't win by himself? This guy? Nah. John Cena, the 13-time WWE Champion, 3-time World Heavyweight Champion, 5-time United States Champion, 2-time Royal Rumble winner, a Money in the Bank winner, and a Tag Team Champion. John Cena should be booked like a final boss, where you must earn a match against him and you must struggle to get a win against John Cena. But since everybody is beating John Cena, it makes these wins feel empty. And for anyone who says Cena is a Hollywood star and he doesn't need to win, well, let's go back to 2011. The Rock comes back. So between 2011 to 2016, The Rock has been in six matches. He won four five of those matches and only lost one. Now, 2011 to 2016 Rock and 2023 Rock are two different people. At that time, he wasn't the highest paid Hollywood actor Rock, but he was still a Hollywood actor with a part-time WWE schedule. But that didn't stop him from beating John Cena at WrestleMania and also ending CM Punk's historic title reign as the WWE champion. The Rock was not losing to everybody. No, he was winning. I mean, he even got a title reign on a part-time schedule. And this led to the rematch between him and John Cena, where Cena finally won and it was impactful because The Rock wasn't losing to everybody and Cena had to struggle to get that win. It's the same thing with Brock Lesnar. If Brock was losing to everybody, like Ricochet, then Seth Rollins and Drew McIntyre's wins would not have much of an impact. It's also the same with Roman Reigns. The person that's going to dethrone Roman will have the biggest night of their lives because they will accomplish something that they have established as being difficult to achieve. So I don't know why they have decided to go the opposite direction with John Cena. They've turned him into a jobber and I'm somehow meant to believe that he is elevating the future generation of WWE superstars. How? John Cena is verbally destroying these people on the mic and exposing them as amateurs and then he loses. Wow, you really elevated them, John. You know what? Let's actually look at these wrestlers that have beaten John Cena and let's impact whether they were elevated or not. Number one, The Fiend at WrestleMania 36. I actually have a video about how WWE destroyed The Fiend. The link is in the description below. So The Fiend beat John Cena in a Firefly Funhouse match, which wasn't your typical match. It was more of a psychological cinematic match. Did this win elevate The Fiend? No! It was too little too late. They missed their moment at WrestleMania 30 and at that point The Fiend was 
already getting destroyed by the WWE creatives because they made him lose in a quick match against Goldberg. And after his win against Cena, it became worse. So no, he wasn't elevated. Number two, Roman Reigns at SummerSlam 2021. Now, Cena verbally destroyed Roman in their promos and Roman won the match. It didn't really do much for Roman because he was at the height of his historic title reign and there was no ways he was going to lose to Cena. Number three, Austin Theory at WrestleMania 39. This is the one person that was worse off after beating John Cena. In, in a room with Austin Theory, I said, the reason I came back to Boston is because you can't do this yourself yet. You cannot carry a WrestleMania promo yourself yet. And if you fail... We waste the equity that I'm willing to give. Oh, Cena destroyed him on the mic. Oh my God, I felt bad for Austin. I was like, Cena, go easy on the kid. Then they had their match at WrestleMania, which was not one of Cena's best matches. And even though Austin win, it didn't do anything for him. And they eventually took the belt away from him. Number four. Solo Sikoa at Crown Jewel 2023. Again, John Cena destroyed him on the mic, but Solo won. So does this mean Solo is going to get a big push? No, he only beat John Cena. Someone who we have established is beatable. Now, if Solo won against Brock or Roman, now that would be more impactful. So in treating John Cena like a jobber, WWE has devalued his star power and his ability to make his opponents look good for beating him. WWE needs to start treating John Cena like the star he is. They need to stop making him lose every single match that he is in. So that if a time comes in the future where he has to elevate a young superstar, he can actually make an impact in that young wrestler's career. And that's my 53 cents. If you haven't subscribed, please do. And tell me what do you think about this topic.